hello. In this video, I'm covering some of the most commonly used aspects of the user interface and trying to explain it so you know you get you can get around the user interface easier and you know what some of the most like I just said commonly used areas are. You know what all these icons are for and you know what to do with them. You probably will be overwhelmed by uh, 3ds Max when you first open it. You know if you've not uh, used anything like this before. Just like me when I first started, it was loads of icons I didn't know what, you know, hardly any of them were for. The only ones I did recognize are, you know, open new scene, uh, open file, save file to undo and redo. But the rest I was really mystified and, you know, some of the new starters out there probably are too. So, first thing, you'll probably notice an absence of the, the file drop down. So, the file drop down has actually been replaced by the Autodesk uh, logo. It's this green kind of box just here in the top left corner. Um, and if you hover over it, you'll see it does highlight and you can click it. And then from there, you'll see your normal kind of drop down, which you would in any, any piece of software. You've got a new file to reset your um, 3ds Max. So if you've made any changes to any settings or anything like that, hit by clicking reset it will reset everything back to the default value so that's really good to do if you're going to start a new project you can open files yeah so you can um, save them save as so if you want to save it as a separate file name and all that kind of stuff you can just go to save as save a copy of a file if you want to back stuff up it's really good you can import stuff export stuff um, and then there's also really useful kind of shortcuts to your most recent files open. So if you want to um, be, you know, if you're working on a project which is taking weeks on end, you don't want to have to keep going to file open, file open. You can just go hit this icon here and click straight on the shortcut and it'll open up right away. So the next thing that I'll sort of cover is the viewport. You know, this is the area that takes up the most amount of space on your 3ds Max user interface. It's the thing which shows you, you know, these viewports show you what is in your 3D space. Currently, I have a Lamborghini in there, which I've been working on uh, previously. Um, this is an early version of the model, so it's not completely finished. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is that we can see the Lamborghini from different views yeah, different perspectives. And I'm just going to go through these views and tell you what each one is for. Now, the three views, the top right view here, top left, and the bottom left, those three views are what you call orthographic views. And by that I mean, you know, they're 2D representations of your 3D objects. So they have no perspective. They are completely flat. But you know they show your 3d objects so that's really important that you never rotate in this view and I'll tell you what will happen if you try and rotate in this view so to rotate uh, if you don't know how it's alt and the middle mouse button and we can rotate can you see how it's kind of just going all messed up you've got the grid looking kind of crazy and if you can see even though I'm rotating it from this kind of view all the cubes here, all these kind of boxes that have been destroyed, they're all the same size and that tells us that there's no perspective because the lines that go further away should be coming closer together and that's what perspective does and I'll demonstrate next you know how perspective does work in um, in 3ds Max in the, in the perspective view if you ever rotate these views you know by accident and they kind of go crazy like this you can reset the views you can just you know go click on orthographic in this top left corner and reset it so that was the front view so I'm going to click on front and it will just reset that view very nicely for you um, the next thing then like I just said perspective so in our perspective view we can see straight away that the boxes closest to us are bigger than the boxes further away so if you look at the one in the really the top right far corner just there it looks really small compared to the one just here and if I kind of zoom in further you'll be able to see it even more if you have a look here you see how these lines are going closer together so the perspective view kind of 
tries to replicate or it does in fact um, like a view from a human eye you know we always see perspective you know the, the, the real world isn't flat is it it's not 2d um, things that are further away look smaller than things that are closer to you so that's what that view is for so the other views are all 2d views and just really important that you realize that they are 2d and they're flat um, and this is the sort of real world view I guess of your 3d uh, objects and this is the only view that you should be rotating in yeah so that's always what I try and kind of say over and over again until people get it you know that you should not be rotating in any of your other views apart from perspective so just to just to go back to those views this is your front view this is the top view so kind of a bird's eye view of your 3d objects and this is the left view you probably saw me early, earlier clicking just here where it says front and you can you can change this view to another view right here you can change it to the left view the right view the back view oh no my battery's running out so um because i'm on my laptop right now i'll try and kind of breeze through the rest but covering all the all the things i guess all the different aspects of the user interface um, so the next step I guess would be just to tell you what this stuff on the right is so this is what you call your modifier tab um, where you create stuff or the control panel some people call it in the very first tab you create objects yeah so you can create boxes spheres and all that kind of stuff and you know go crazy with all these objects in the second one you can modify objects and again in future videos I will be going through in more detail what each one's for the third one hierarchy so you can affect pivot points here and you can do other kind of stuff again I don't want to confuse you by going over too much uh, motion display and utilities so each one of these has its own use and the way that you scroll in this kind of control uh, panel is you click on an empty space on the side and you can just click on your left mouse button and drag up and down or you can use this kind of bar on the side just here yeah the next thing I guess and probably the last thing I'll cover in this particular video um, is just at the bottom here you've got the animation um, toolbar I guess the animation area so this is the area where you can set keys and you can create animations and you can play them you can you know go to the previous frame the next frame you can go to the end of the animation you can skip back to the beginning and with this little bar just here which is where your um, your keys would be shown you can kind of skip forward and you can place um, you can go to any particular key that you choose yeah so you can kind of run through your animation in that way too and there's some other settings and stuff that you can change uh, and down here which I'll go over in a future video so hopefully um, I've not rushed too much again I was against the clock because my battery was dying on my laptop um, but you know hopefully that's been explained well enough for you to understand and again if you have any questions uh, anything that was confusing or I didn't cover well enough just pop a question at the bottom uh, and I will reply as soon as possible